This is a difficult surgery slash IM level question for the 2CK. If you're studying for those shelves in particular, you'll know that the hepatobiliary question is very fucking annoying. And there's a lot we can talk about, okay? This is a classic uh, scenario where I'm going to need to be extra concise. So we're just going to look at this. We've got a 55-year-old woman, and she's got a three-month history of fatigue and diffuse itchiness, pruritus, okay? I didn't write pruritus specifically because I didn't want 5% of people to switch into buzzwordy mode. Not that it matters. We look at her vitals, temperature 98.6, heart rate 80, respiratory rate 14, normal range 12 to 16 per minute, blood pressure 140 on 90, that is that is hypertension. Laboratory studies show ALP, 300 international units per liter, normal range for ALP, 50 to 150 uh, IU per liter, total bilirubin, 4.0 milligrams per deciliter, normal is about one, okay? Serum amylase, 40 units per liter, normal range about 30 to 120. So you might say, but Michael, what the fuck? Like, you know, I obviously in the real exam would have the lab values to look up. Uh, I'm not supposed to know these normal ranges off the top of my head, am I? You kind of are, okay? You have to take your fucking training wheels off. ALP, especially if you're studying for 2CK, you need to know that's 50 to 150. Bilirubin, you should know normal range is about one direct or conjugated bilirubin, 0 0.1. Serum amylase, I have seen uh, NBME questions at 2CK level where they don't give you the normal ranges listed, okay? If they want elevated amylase, they're literally going to say 1,200. You might say, but what about light pace? Like, isn't amylase less reflective of pancreatic issues than light pace? Like, why are you specifically using amylase here? It's because it's what I've seen on 2CK NBME questions, okay? Like, literally, they, they'll just say light pace. Or, sorry, they'll just say amylase. Why do they do that? No fucking idea, okay? But it's what they do. She has no history of pain. This is a key sentence here. Because if she's had no history of pain, this diagnosis, if you're really confused and you're looking at these images and you're like, okay, no idea what I'm looking at, no history of pain pushes us away from stones as a differential. So if a patient has cholelithiasis, cholelithiasis, cholelithiasis being stones in the gallbladder, cholelithiasis, stones in the biliary tree, they're going to have a history of pain, okay? And this patient doesn't. It's not to say it's impossible to have stones and not have pain, but unlikely for US MLE questions. The patient's abdomen left hand are shown. This abdomen is showing us an enlarged gallbladder and she is jaundiced. This is what the US MLE will do. They'll show you an abdomen where they jack up the saturation uh, with the yellow. That's essentially what I did. Uh, I just ripped this image off Google and then just jacked it up, made it as yellow as I could. And then these fingers are supposed to be tar-stained tobacco hands. So rather than me telling you she has a long smoking history, I'm just showing you she's a smoker with these hands. And she's got jaundice. She's got an enlarged gallbladder, this enlarged epigastric mass. And she is afebrile, okay? She, her pancreatic enzymes obviously are not elevated. And she's clearly got an obstruction of some kind because post-hepatic obstruction because of the high ALP and high bilirubin. So... This makes us think of pancreatic cancer, right? A febrile patient, head of pancreas cancer, impinging on the common bile duct. You have an a febrile patient who's jaundiced, who has a painless palpable gallbladder, right? That's Corvoisier sign. But rather than saying painless palpable gallbladder, as I just said, they can instead just show you this abdomen with the epigastric bulge and they jack up the yellow for the saturation. So this is likely pancreatic cancer. That's our initial thought. If we were to have elevated amylase, let's say, let's say same exact fucking patient, okay? Everything the same, even a smoker, okay? But the amylase is 1200. That's going to be gallstone pancreatitis because if you have a stone descend through the common bile duct and block the hepatopancreatic ampulla, then we can have gallstone pancreatitis. That's a type of cholelithiasis. As I mentioned before, cholelithiasis being stone in the biliary tree, but if it descends enough where it also blocks off the pancreatic duct, then we've got gallstone pancreatitis. So it's notable that the amylase is normal, okay? Uh, in pancreatic cancer, your pancreatic enzymes are not elevated. That's really, really important. And so we're just going to look at these answer choices here. I'll discuss more as far as differentials in a moment. 
So when we're looking for pancreatic cancer, what we're going to do is a CT of the abdomen. It's what the USMLE wants, okay? Debates as far as, oh, but like, shouldn't you use an ultrasound first, you know, just to double check for stones, it's less radiation. Possibly, it's not unreasonable. It's not what the USMLE wants, okay? When you get a pancreatic uh, cancer question, you need to just do, boom, CT of the abdomen, okay, with contrast. They're not going to make you choose no contrast or contrast, but it happens to be with contrast. Contrast is when we're looking for malignancy in particular. Non-contrast could be for stones, for, uh, I should clarify, uh, urolithiasis or nephrolithiasis, not biliary stones, okay? We don't do CT of the abdomen for stones of the biliary tree or gallbladder. Um, and also non-contrast CT of the head when we're looking for bleeding, Okay. Don't want to get too tangential on that on that stuff though. Choice A, uh, abdominal ultrasound. Wrong fucking answer. This is what we do for stones of the gallbladder. Okay, so cholelithiasis. We do simply abdominal ultrasound. Okay, patients who might have cholelithiasis, stone in the biliary tree. USMLE wants ERCP, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, not ultrasound. Once again, in terms of all the algorithms. Right, and you say, well, wouldn't we do a simple abdominal ultrasound, an epigastric ultrasound first, bef before doing an ERCP? If the answer sounds like cholelithiasis, you're going to do ERCP straight up on the USMLE. Okay, so pancreatic cancer, you're going to do CT of the abdomen for cholelithiasis. If we had stone in the biliary tree, we're going to do ERCP. If we have simply cholelithiasis, patients almost always not going to be jaundiced. I don't want to talk about exceptions right now, but usually the patient's not going to be jaundiced because there's if the stone's in the gallbladder, there's obviously not an obstruction. It hasn't descended into the biliary tree. How can you back it up from the liver? You can't. So if it's just simple cholithiasis, you're going to choose ultrasound, okay? And if they give you a scenario, let's say this exact same patient, okay? Exact same patient. And they say in the last line, CT of the abdomen is performed and shows no abnormalities. You're like, wait, what? You're like, this sounds like pancreatic cancer, though. CT is normal. What's going on? You want to think cholangiocarcinoma. It's like, ooh, wow. Okay, so biliary tree cancer, bile duct cancer, uh, that's also common in smokers. So if they tell you in the last line, CT of the abdomen shows no abnormalities, it's not going to be pancreatic cancer, most likely. Then you're going to do an ERCP to look for cholangiocarcinoma. That's taking it to the next level. Um, they can tell you... For instance, uh, if they say woman 20s to 50s, she has diffuse pruritus, they say, they say she has high cholesterol, and they might say a stone is visualized in the gallbladder, and then they tell you that she has a history of, let's say, an autoimmune disease in the family, okay, or she either personally has an autoimmune disease or there's an autoimmune disease in the family, like rheumatoid arthritis, they, they want to push you toward um, primary biliary cirrhosis, okay, and you're going to do uh, anti-mitochondrial antibodies, and you diagnose ultimately with liver biopsy, all right? So when we look at endoscopic ultrasound, I have never seen that as an answer on NBME material, at least until this point, at the time of this video, okay? When might you do an endoscopic ultrasound? This could be done to uh, visualize a posterior pancreatic cancer, okay? There have been instances where you can get false negative CT, and an endoscopic ultrasound can actually, where you literally stick an endoscope down into the stomach and you view the pancreas from behind, uh, you can sometimes visualize pancreatic cancer. Sounds weird. I know. I agree. But that's one use for it. You can also drain uh, occasional fluid collections from the pancreas via endoscopic ultrasound. But as I said, I've never seen this as an answer on NB material up until this point. ERCP is also the answer, not just for uh, cholangiocarcinoma and for cholelithiasis, as I mentioned before. I've also seen ERCP as the answer for drainage of pancreatic pseudocyst. They'll show you a CT where there's a giant fucking collection in the pancreas, and they'll say it's someone who's had acute pancreatitis, and the answer is just ERCP. And you're like, really? How does that make sense? Apparently, you can drain uh, fluid collection pseudocysts internally via ERCP or endoscopic ultrasound. Okay. That's when I've seen these as answers. HIDA scan is, which is also known as cholecystography. Okay, uh, HIDA scan is going to be the answer when you suspect cholecystitis. So it's going to sound like cholelithiasis, patient's history of biliary colic, 
and today presents with a fever, let's say, of 103. So it sounds exactly like cholelithiasis, stone in the gallbladder, but the patient has a fever, that's cholecystitis. You do an ultrasound as the next best step in management, okay? You do abdominal ultrasound, but if they tell you abdominal ultrasound is equivocal or negative, they want high to skin as the answer, okay? Apparently, most cholecystitis cases are caused by an obstruction, an outlet obstruction from the gallbladder. So when you do a HIDA scan, it's a dye that's taken up by the, a radio labeled dye taken up by the liver, a radio sensitive dye taken up by the liver, secreted into bile, which the bile should enter the gallbladder, right? So if the gallbladder fails to light up on the scan, you say, oh, there must be an obstruction. So that can actually confirm the diagnosis of cholecystitis, confirming you have an obstruction. Uh, if your ultrasound doesn't show a stone of some kind obstructing uh, the exit of the gallbladder. As I said, I'm going to keep this uh, clip concise. There are probably going to be other details that I will look back at, look back on this clip and wish I had mentioned real quick, but I'm going to make other questions, okay? We don't want to make this a 19-minute clip. So High yield for surgery, internal medicine, okay? Uh, a lot of, many talking points. If you liked this, subscribe to my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.